Lessons to learn from a lollipop lady, also known as crosswalk attendant, crossing guard, and can be male and female. I want to share with you a story of unconditional kindness that I witnessed for many years bringing my children to secondary school. There wasn't much else to do as they were busy ignoring me, as teenagers do, so I became extra observant in my outside surroundings. I noticed each year and for many years beautiful moments of kindness between a lollipop lady and the children who approached her on a busy morning to a local primary school. I noticed children beaming with smiles and excitement as they approached this lady dressed in white, holding what may have been a magical wand in the eyes of the children who greeted her. Every morning without fail, this lady would glow with kindness and the children would skip happily towards her. Hail, rain and snow, this lady was predictable in her actions with her high fives, smiles and laughter. She would then stand out onto the road and the children would wait for her guidance. The children waited until she reached her arm out, which may have been the wing of an angel, as she gently guided the children to safety. If this lady had a profound impact on me while witnessing and not even hearing the conversations, I can only imagine the impact that she had on the children. I am often asked how to help children who have experienced trauma, who feel different because of a disability, who feel unloved, unwanted, or for sometimes don't feel rooted on this planet. And of course, I have many suggestions, but the starting point is always kindness. Does the little boy who comes into my playroom care about my credentials, achievements? Is he going to ask me for a copy of my mission statement, policy and procedures? No, he's not. But what he will want to know is, am I kind? Will I show kindness when he rejects it because the world has been too hard? Will I show kindness when she has hardened her heart because she can't risk to show softness? Will I show kindness without being overwhelmed when children show me their sadness? Every adult here this evening will remember the nice teacher, family member, coach, who brought the extra treats, did the art, smiled, laughed. But what we will remember most is their kindness. I have been taught by the best in the world in play therapy and child and adolescent psychotherapy. And my studying and learning has been amazing in my work with children and has helped me to understand them at a deeper level. I have the ability, the ability to work with uh, the children who face the biggest battles of their lives. But they might only be five. Many of these battles we will never face in a lifetime. Without kindness, our interactions with children will be superficial. And guess what? They will know it. I remember working with a young mom many years ago who was battling with cancer. And she spoke about pleading for one more birthday, one more Christmas, pleading for more time. As we sat one evening and we spoke how she was going to tell her children her time was limited and that she was going to die. She told me that her last wish for her children was, I'm just going to pause here for a minute. Often we complain of being, as parents, feeling overwhelmed, stressed, often unseen in this difficult world as being a parent. 
But maybe if we remember, some parents are planning their final goodbyes. Her last wish for her children was, she hoped her children would be helped by people who showed them unconditional kindness. So, how can we help? What can we do? We can be kind and we can be playful. But if we are to succeed, we need to remember our inner child. If we are to succeed, we need to be playful and we need to be kind. Often a panic sets in by the person helping the child or the parent and they'll say to me, I, I, I don't know what to say, I won't know what to do. Well, don't say anything. Just be kind beyond kindness. So, I want to ask you a question here this evening. Well, I have two actually. The first question is, is it okay to talk about maybe your role here um, as a parent, your role as a profession, maybe your role here in TEDx? Yeah, there's a bit of confidence there. Yeah, okay. The second question is, is it okay to turn to the person beside you and to role play? Give her no eye contact, don't pick me. <laughs> so what did I do? I added the word play. That's all I did. What has happened to our playfulness? We now know so much more about children's mental health than ever before. So why is it that our children are struggling more today than ever? So I'm going to wonder. I wonder, is it because there's a decline in play? I wonder, is it because we now live our lives through a screen? Is it because we have created a world where we expect children to be happy all the time? If they're to be happy all the time, how are they going to manage stress, disappointment, frustration, sadness? We may have set them up. Is it because we have disconnected from our communities and our togetherness? Have we forgot the power of play? You know, our elders had the remedy to some of these answers. When we were younger and we went in home and we said to our parents, I'm really upset, I'm annoyed, I had a fight with my friend, you know, I'm really sad, this is what they'll say. Will you ever go out and play? They had the remedy. I want to take a trip down memory lane here this evening, okay? Most of you will remember that amazing movie usually played at Christmas time. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The excitement. And that beautiful moment where Charlie is standing in the corner shop and it's his last opportunity to find the golden ticket. So he peels back the bar of chocolate and there it is, the shiny golden ticket and the excitement. I want you to bring yourselves back to being seven or eight. Who in your life would have been playful enough and kind enough to go on the journey to the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with you? Food for thought. Having worked with thousands of children over the years and seeing their play and witnessing the trauma that they show me through their play and hearing their stories and unfortunately you know, the heartache that awaits them. What I am always blown away by is the stories they share with me about the people that are kind to them. The teacher, the coach, social worker, the guard, youth worker, family member, and how this kindness is hugely important in their journey to recovery. If you work with children, 
or meet them on a voluntary basis. You are a memory in their memory bank forever. I'm going to repeat that. If you work with children or meet them on a voluntary basis, you will be a memory in their memory bank forever. Wow. I remember a little boy telling his mom, and he seen me outside Penny's, and he said, Mom, stop the car, quickie Dell's lost, we need to bring her back to the playroom. <laughs> How do you want children to remember you? How would you like to be brought up in conversations? Yes, many children are referred to therapy and other supports, which are hugely beneficial in their recovery. But we can do so much in our everyday interactions with children. I want other people to be weird like me. Okay, I want all of you to be weird like me. Because this is how children describe me. They'll say, you're really weird. You're really different. And of course, play therapists wonder a lot. And I'll say to the child, well, tell me about me being weird. What's different about me? And this is what they say. Well, like, you're, you're really old and you still play, you know. <laughs> you sing, but you don't sound great. You know lots of knock-knock jokes. When I tell you I make mistakes, you tell me you make them too. I hear you say nice things about me to other people. You listen to me. You believe in me. You see me. I'd like to close this evening with a poem, and unfortunately, the author is unknown. I try to teach the children with books. They gave me only puzzled looks. I try to teach the children with words. They pass them unheard. In despair, I turned aside. How will I teach these children, I cried. Into my hand, they put the key. Come, they said, play with me. Thank you so much. Thank you.